Hello, Roz. Uh, for lesson 1.5, I'm adding and subtracting rational expressions. Let's do an example I usually skip in class. Um, where it's a, another example like the last one we did where we have to perform a multiplication and division along with an addition or subtraction. So we, we have to be careful to follow um, the order of operations. And I'll point out a couple of other strategies as we go. So here's our expression. We need to evaluate, or sorry, simplify it and state its restrictions. Um, we do need to follow the order of operations, which means that we should be performing or operating on this division first. Now, I'm not ready to divide yet. What I want to do is prepare to divide first. Um, so if there was any factoring to be done up here, I would still do that on this line. You also, for proper math form, can't just do this part and write it off here on the side. You want to write a math sentence that says this expression is equivalent to, and then you write out this expression. I am intimately aware with how long this takes. I have done this myself many times. I would never ask you to do something that I haven't done myself. So here's me factoring. I don't know why. I would draw, my eye was drawn to the denominator first. I factored that as a difference of squares. This looks like a um, perfect square to me. 2m minus 1 times 2m minus 1. I'm going to keep this as a division so that I see the division of my numerator and a division of the denominator as well for all of my restrictions. Um, one is neither prime nor composite, but there's only because there's only one way of writing it. And that thinks that means that I, I'm pretty sure I can do this one by inspection as well. Uh, let's see, I would want to get negative 3 plus 2. And sorry, I checked that one. Distribution check this one. Distribution looks good. And common factor. Fine. Now, it is OK if it takes you a little bit longer to process stuff. That's fine. Speed isn't really a, a requirement in our course, but efficiency is. And so if you're going to, we, I ended up factoring one, two, three, four expressions here. If you're even taking like two minutes to factor any one of these expressions, we might be spending eight minutes before we've actually done any grade 11 math here. So it's as important then that you practice strategies that will help you factor efficiently instead of, say, staring at it and just using trial and error randomly or uh, uh, even decomposition we tend to find takes students a little bit longer. OK, um, this is a bit of a special case here because normally I would be ready to perform this division. I would multiply by the reciprocal. But on this line, I actually see some simplification that can take place. Those expressions will divide each other out. I'm just going to make sure I come back here when I state my restrictions. And maybe I could even state my restrictions right now. Well, let's try that. Um, this can't be 0. So if 2m plus 1 can't equal 0, that means that m can't equal negative 1 half. There's the conjugate of that, so positive 1 half. I already stated that restriction right there. Oh, this is going to come back and haunt me because I actually already had a common denominator. I'm going to pretend I didn't notice that then. And we'll just deal with that. Um, let's see, this can't equal 0, so m can't equal negative 5. That can't equal 0, m can't equal negative 1 third, and I already caught the 1 half. So even if I can't simplify any further, I still get the marks for my restrictions here. Right, yeah, so what I just noticed is that these factors were common. I'm dividing out a common factor. Again, I'm going to pretend I didn't notice that. Oh. Well, that's why. I didn't think that was supposed to happen here. It's that factor and that factor that divide. OK, good. Less of a problem then. You know what? I'm going to keep these in brackets for this question because I'm worried about making a mess. Let's see. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this, 3m plus 5. And I'm going to have 3m plus 1 multiplied by 2m minus 1. OK, so I factored, simplified, multiplied by the reciprocal. Now I'm ready to multiply. I'm still not looking for a common denominator yet. Finding a common denominator shouldn't cause any mistakes in a multiplication, but it's probably going to cause mistakes because you're doing something that you don't need. and That means you're probably going to do something else wrong. Um, instead of mushing it all together and multiplying it all out, let's look for shared factors. I have a factor of 2m minus 1 in the numerator. Is there a factor of 2m minus 1 in the denominator? Oh, you betcha. 
Is there a factor of 3 in the denominator? Notice I'm only looking in these two terms because those are the only two terms that are being multiplied. No, I'm not seeing a factor of 3. There's a 3 there, but it's not a factor of 3. There's a factor of 3m plus 1. Is there a factor of m plus 5? No. So now I'm going to perform the multiplication. You know what? These guys need bracket or would like brackets as well. We're going to have a subtraction of 1 times 3 times m plus 5. Let's do 3m plus 5 divided by this times that. 2m plus 1 multiplied by 3m plus 1. Okay. So um, order of operations. Factored first, simplified, multiplied by the reciprocal, simplified. Now I'm ready to do the subtraction, so I'm thinking about a common denominator. But I'm also looking for the lowest common denominator. Both denominators, to have a common denominator, will require a factor of 2m plus 1. Good news, this one already has one. Both denominators will also require a factor of 3m plus 1. So let's place a factor of 3m plus 1 in the denominator there and in the numerator there. Like I said in class, you need to show this step two times or zero times. You are not multiplying by 3m plus 1. You are multiplying by 1. That is the only number that will not change the value of this expression. Okay, You're responsible for what you're writing. This will give us I'm gonna. Uh, I'm a little short on space, but I still think it's worth just writing out this line, 3m plus 1, especially with the subtraction here, because it's very easy, especially with my red stuff in the way here, to distribute the 3 to write minus 3m plus 15, and that's wrong. I want to have a subtraction of three groups of m plus 5, which means I will be, should be, subtracting 15 which I will see now that I see negative 3 as my coefficient. I didn't see negative 3 as my coefficient before. Um, there is no need to expand the denominator. Yeah, I am going to need a new page. I should not try to squeeze this all in here. Let me just grab another one that I can put underneath. The program I'm using does not allow you to just temporarily pause your recording and then continue. So you get to hear me distract you with this never mind okay yeah i want to talk about this line no need to expand the denominator you should write the denominator properly though um on this line i believe it came up in class because it, it always it, it should always let's make sure we understand that there is no factor of 3m plus 1 in the numerator well there's a bracket of 3m plus 1 but you don't want a bracket of 3m plus 1. To divide 3m plus 1 from the numerator, you would need to divide it from both terms. If you just cross it out here, you have not divided it from that term. It is identical to the situation 2x minus 3 divided by 2. This does not equal x minus 3. You can't just choose to cross those out. If you use the language, the proper language, we're looking for shared factors in the numerator, and you understand what a factor is, then you'll be fine. If you memorize, you just, if there's a bracket in the numerator and denominator and you cross them out, then you're probably going to be making that mistake. Okay. And it's always going to happen when you find a common denominator as well. If you've placed a factor of 3m plus 1 in the numerator because you want a, of this term, because you have a factor of 3m plus 1 in the denominator, you're going to think that those are going to divide out. But if they could, then why did you bother multiplying by 3m plus 1 in the first place? OK, um, my, I, I've said it a couple of times now. No need to expand the denominator. The numerator, however, is not in factored form. That's another reason why I can't see that there's a factor of 3m plus 1 there. There might be a factor of 3m plus 1 in the numerator. I just don't see it yet. Um, spoiler, there isn't. Um, so it's not in a factored form. It's not in a standard form. That means that I do feel the need to expand the numerator because um, it's, it's neither in a factored nor a standard form. When I expand my numerator, I will get 15m cubed plus 5m minus 3m, let's just simplify that down to plus 2m, minus 1, minus 3m, minus 15, all over 2m plus 1, multiplied by 3m plus 1. I've already stated my restrictions there. Just remind me when I get down to the end. 
sorry, that I haven't, or that I don't need to state my restrictions again. If you do your restrictions up here, you might want to draw an arrow for the reader because it's kind of your job to make sure that they can find it. Okay. Tidy up the numerator to 15m squared uh, minus m minus 16 all over 2m plus 1 divided by 3m plus 1. Now, turns out that if we did stop here, we would be okay because this expression will not simplify any further. We might not be super confident, though, that it doesn't simplify further. So usually the question comes up, should I try factoring the numerator? And I'm going to say, yes, we should try factoring. Um, if you understand the x method, you should feel pretty confident saying that there's no way that 2m plus 1 could be a factor of 15m squared, because you would have to have a fractional coefficient to get 2m times something to 15m squared. This is called the factor theorem in advanced functions, a, a very important skill for your next course. But look, there's a possibility that 3m plus 1 could be a factor of 15m squared minus 16. The problem is that it can take a little bit of time to actually perform this factorization to either convince yourself that it doesn't factor or to convince yourself that there is no factor of 3m plus 1. Uh, I don't think we should be avoiding getting practice in factoring, though. So let's try it out. My target is negative 1, 12 and 15, no, sorry, 12 and 20. Won't do it. Uh, 6 and 40. I feel like I'm getting further away. 3 and... 80? No. 20 and 12? Nope. 10 and 24? Nope. 5 and... Nope. 60 and 4? Nope. 30? I thought there was a factorization here. Maybe it was actually a mistake in my, um, in my notes. Let me just check my notes here. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's one that I haven't checked yet, I guess. Um, yeah, it's the 15 and the 16. There it is. 15 and 16. Unlucky that it's the larger numbers on the outside. Um, minus 16 plus 15. So we do 15m minus 16 multiplied by m plus 1. The good news, again, here is that if you, if you did miss this factorization, you're not going to lose a mark. Um, because having this in factored form is not simpler than having this in standard form. Having it in standard form isn't simpler than having it in factored form. Neither one of these is considered simpler than the other. The, the problem is that we kind of need to try factoring to see, does this quotient simplify anymore? And now I notice that it won't simplify anymore. In advanced functions, when you start graphing a function where its outputs are given by, by these inputs, yeah, you'll definitely want your numerator in a factored form as well. And don't forget those restrictions down here. It's the best spot for it. So yeah, once I write it in factored form, then I convince myself that there is no factor of 2m plus 1 in the numerator. There's no factor of 3m plus 1 in the denominator. So we would have been OK ending here or ending there. Okay.